What's up guys, welcome back. Let me let you on a little secret. We are not limited to working with big lenders and big banks for borrowing money. The power of real estate is that you can have control over the transaction and that comes with terms, how much money you can borrow and what you pay monthly. Unfortunately, the big banks and lenders want you to think that you are limited to what they have in terms for the contract of borrowing their money. So we're gonna talk about creative financing and more specifically sub two where you can control the terms the financing what the balloon payments look like and i'll be going over a lot of the definitions and what a current transaction that i'm working on and facilitating as a real estate agent with one of my own clients so let's get right into it So first things first, what is sub two? Sub two is subject to, that's the full name of it. And what it is is the buyer takes over the mortgage payments and the monthly payments all the way until they actually purchase the home. So the buyer assumes the mortgage responsibility, they pay for the mortgage on the seller's behalf and the seller holds onto the property until some sort of deal it works out. So this is where the name comes in, subject to or subject TO, the buyer purchases the home subject to the loan. And this is a great way for people to get properties under their name without having to go through the traditional methods of getting proper financing, like from big banks and things like that. Especially with people like me, where I already have three properties under my name, I'm really hard to finance at this point, and I'm looking to more creative strategies to purchase more properties. So let's talk about the specific deal that I'm facilitating as a subject to deal. So my clients recently bought a property with me back in 2023. The whole idea was for them to house hack like in the basement or in the main floor and have the opposite side or the basement or the main floor, whichever they're not living in, operate as a short-term rental or mid-term rental. Unfortunately, my clients had to keep working out of state, travel for work, and instead of having to manage the maintenance, the vacancies, and trying to find more people in there, they're deciding to just let go of the property and sell it. So to get their full money back, they wanted to sell it at $575,000. But the comps were not looking like we could sell it at that price, especially within that neighborhood. The comps were looking like $535,000 to maybe $545,000. But that is if we were to sell it on the MLS and the public entity of like where you see Zillow, where you see, you know, on Redfin or Realtor.com, that is the MLS. They extract data from the MLS and they put it on their platforms. But I was not planning on selling it on the MLS. I wanted to sell the package deal of the listing itself, the business, the cleaners, and everything in between, even the furnishings as a business package deal along with the house itself. And after asking a bunch of realtors and several investor friends of mine, I have one potential buyer and they're interested in doing a subject to deal. Basically, they will take over those monthly payments until the balloon event. And I'll be getting into what a balloon event is shortly. So I was really excited about it and I told my clients about it. And the main thing here is that we want a win-win situation with both the buyer and the seller all the way until the buyer actually fully takes on the property itself after all those monthly payments. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what a balloon payment is. So the buyer is gonna be taking over the monthly payments, the mortgage, all that good stuff on the seller's behalf, but the loan is still under the seller's name. Ultimately, the seller just wants to wash their hands of this property and fully give it over to the buyer. And what that looks like, it comes in the form of a balloon payment. So at the end of, let's say, five years, seven years, 10 years, however long it takes for the business to stabilize or whatever is agreed upon on the contract, the buyer has to buy out the seller in terms of refinance or just selling the property. So at the balloon payment, the buyer works with their own lender to fully purchase the property and the seller gets to wash their hands of the property and they are good to go. It's so much easier to go that way and that way the buyer can find a way to 
make sure that the property works and appraises well, especially at the balloon payment. So a couple of questions here. There's some fake cues that a lot of people have with creative financing. For example, what if the buyer just does not pay the mortgage payment? I mean, that's a huge liability for the seller, right? So in the case of my seller, it is a one strike and you are out kind of situation. If the buyer misses a payment seven days later, it will go back to the seller and it's like nothing even happened but it is a high risk situation for the buyer because they do not want to miss a payment. They are incentivized to not miss a payment because if they miss a payment, all those payments that they've made already will go directly to the seller. The seller will take advantage of having their monthly payments taken care of for all those months previous. And the down payment required, like if it's agreed upon, will also go to the seller. So there's a lot of wins for the seller if the buyer misses a payment. So why would a buyer want to go through this whole complicated situation versus let's say a more simple, tried and true traditional financing, right? And as I mentioned before, it is based on their applicability of them being a proper borrower with traditional financing. So chances are the buyer wants to go through creative financing because they can't get traditional financing, which is pretty normal, especially if they have a couple of properties under their name already. Maybe their debt to income ratio is too high, they can't get another mortgage payment, so it's just a lot more complicated if they were to go the traditional route and more simple if they were to go the creative route. And what is not tough is hitting the like and subscribe button. It is completely free and you should definitely do it, especially if you want to learn more things about creative financing and real estate investing. I am here for you. Make sure you also, I don't know, text me, call me if you want to reach me. All my information is in the comments or the description below. I'm here for you. Like I, I'm available. I'm a real life human being and I want to make sure that you're making the right decision with any sort of real estate investing, no matter where it is in the nation. But I think my favorite part about sub two deals is that everything is negotiable as far as the balloon payments, how much monthly payment it is, the down payments, how long the transaction happens, all of that can happen under your terms or the buyer's terms. It doesn't even matter where it all comes from, but it is all negotiable. And when you're working with a big lender like Chase or Wells Fargo or something like that, you just can't really mess with the terms and conditions of what those payments might look like. It's just really tough. So when it comes to creative financing, it's you could create a win-win situation for both the buyer and the seller. What's also really great about this deal is that I'm working with one of my good colleagues, Dan Ginther, and maybe you've seen him a couple of times already with the Burr b, b over in Longmont. I've done a bunch of podcasts with him already, so I know, like, and trust him already. And he's done some of these other creative financing deals already. And him coming into the mix and also teaching me and facilitating everything to make sure that we're both winning in, in the situation, I think it's just such an awesome play for my sellers and his buyers at the same time. So literally right now, we're going through the whole process of the sub two deal. And I'll be updating you in the future of what that all looks like. But right now, the buyers still have to tour the property and that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So really excited for it. And that's kind of the cool thing about it as well. Like things go as slow as possible whatever everyone is comfortable with and just making sure that everyone is good to go through the whole transaction. So I am super excited for my sellers to go through this whole process and get the payments that they want at the price that they want and just sort of offload everything to the buyers. And I'm also excited that I get to learn all this good stuff too, because if I can get one transaction in, I can learn what that whole process looks like for any other transaction, and maybe even ask Dan for some extra help. So if you're ever curious about this stuff, hit me up. And if you got additional questions, hit me up. Or if you're looking to buy real estate, hit me up, especially in the Colorado area. I want to make sure that you're making a great decision for whatever your purposes are for your strategy and real estate. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and I will see you next week.